Today, let's look at an iconic American pencil, the Dixon Ticonderoga. Hello everyone. In this box of Dixon and Dixon Ticonderoga pencils, there are a number of unique and interesting and uh, rare and not often seen pencils that I hope to get to someday, like this Dixon Glow and a snazzy metallic green Dixon circus, all in pink, etc. A lot of unusual things in here, but today I'm going to be looking at the most recognizable of the Dixon pencil offerings, um, but we're going to be looking at a, an earlier version that you may or may not have seen before. We'll also grab a couple of um, more recognizable Ticonderogas for comparison. Okay, so first things first, I'll finally remove the rubber band. I've been, every time I open this box and I make a video about any of the Dixons in there, I always say, don't put rubber bands on your pencils because the rubber band will harden will stick to the paint and will ruin the finish on your fine antique pencils. So finally, I am heeding my own advice and doing that. By the way, if the audio is different in this video, I'm trying something a little different with the audio and in hopes of addressing some of the volume issues that have plagued videos on my channel from the beginning. So those of you who have put up with that, I appreciate that. I'm trying something a little different. We'll see how that goes. Um, enough said about that. So what's different about these Dixon Ticonderogas? There's a more modern Ticonderoga for comparison. These are the iconic colors we recognize now that represent a Dixon Ticonderoga pencil, but that wasn't always the case. I'm relying here on information uh, gleaned from Bob Truby's wonderful brand name pencils site that I recommend all the time on this channel. Also, uh, good books on the subject. Henry Petrosky's The Pencil and Caroline Weaver's The Pencil Perfect. A couple of good source books for information about pencils. <laughs> so the coloring here is different. Near as I can tell, that place is manufacture of this probably in the very early 1940s. I believe the iconic green and yellow ferrule began during World War II and was originally plastic. Um, but then once metals became available for pencil production again, uh, they switched to this metal ferrule that is what is now a standard color. Also notice the imprint on the barrel this old example hadn't yet become the now standard green metallic imprint. The model number of pencils also is different, and I'm, I know that signifies something, but for the life of me at the current moment, I cannot recall what. Here are a few other vintage or antique Ticonderogas that may be of interest with different model numbers. Uh, this one's the same, but 
1370 here, you'll notice is a round Ticonderoga, which is unusual. They only have it in this well-worn variety, sadly. And this one was equipped with the uh, typewriter style eraser. It's been used a lot, but this would have formed a, a disc of eraser rubber there at the end. Uh, this one would have been World War II or later because it has the, the coloration. You'll notice the uh, imprint is a different color green than the more modern pencils. So a lot of variety in the history of Ticonderogas. We're looking specifically now at this early 1940s, I believe, variety. They're a little bit dirty. I haven't cleaned them off since adding them to my collection. Made in USA, Dixon Ticonderoga, model 1386, number two pencil, yellow paint on a brass colored ferrule, probably the eraser. I'm not sure if that was originally pink and has discolored over time. Anyone knows, please tell me. I doubt that it was this taupe putty kind of color originally. Let's sharpen one of these. It always feels kind of sacrilegious when I do that, but um, I have multiples of pencils for a reason so that I can sharpen and try them. We'll use the nearby always a readily available deli 0618 0616b 0616b sharpener for that purpose No surprise that it is a cedar pencil. An American pencil of this vintage is almost guaranteed to be cedar. I uh, go beyond the stopping point, maybe a millimeter or so. Okay, so let's give this handsome antique pencil a try. So, what, 80 years? 80 plus years old. Not sure why I'm using. Let's go back to the grid. Formerly Dixon, Joseph Dixon Crucible Company. Began in the early to mid 19th century when they acquired a graphite producing company in Ticonderoga, New York. They took the name Ticonderoga for some of their pencils, and the name now is synonymous with their iconic pencil. Joseph Dixon, interesting story, as related in Petrowski's The Pencil. Living in New England, 
and uh, of a shipping family and ships coming from Ceylon, that is Sri Lanka now, would use blocks of graphite as ballast in their ships and dump them in the harbor because graphite was so plentiful in Ceylon. Well, Joseph Dixon, in a bit of genius, found a use for that graphite and eventually was able to make an arrangement whereby the ballast would be deposited on land where it could be more easily accessed. Certainly the water did it no harm, but uh, his, the first use of the graphite blocks was in making crucibles for um, casting metal. So thereby the Joseph Dixon Crucible Company name. And then later, uh, Joseph Dixon married into a cabinet-making family. And it was a marriage made in heaven. Take the graphite. And you take the woodworking skills and put them together and you make a very nice pencil. And this is a very nice pencil. Again, probably early 1940s. Uh, someone who knows better hopefully will correct me if that doesn't sound right to you. It just, it says quality in a way that Dixon Ticonderogas still do. Um, there's a modern Mexican made Dixon Ticonderoga for comparison. Mexican Ticonderoga is also graded as a number two. So let's compare them. Top is the classic antique USA made Dixon Ticonderoga. And I, I would have a difficult time distinguishing a difference in their writing. In the act of writing, I can feel the modern Mexican-made Ticonderoga actually feels a little smoother to me. Uh, but in terms of the line on the paper, I would not be able to distinguish those at all. So while the appearance of the iconic American pencil has changed over the decades, the business end, the graphite, maybe hasn't changed all that much at all. Anyway, finally, I've tried one of these. I have uh, had them in my collection for some time, never sharpened one until this moment, and glad to have them. If nothing else, just as a piece of history. Dixon Ticonderoga, free, green and yellow. I appreciate you watching. Hope to see you here again next time.